Right. Um, yeah. So I was just saying, I'm going to uh, share some slides now just to help, help kind of walk through the discussion. Um, let me just do that. Um, I just wanted to quickly recap um, ways that you can all contribute to the specification work um, outside of these calls. Um, and then there were a particular some areas of discussion that I wanted to try and cover today. Um, sort of a sort of couple of key areas of the specification that I think um, I've had some feedback on. We had a bit of discussion around last time, but I just want to try and get um, a sense of if we're going in the right direction and if everyone's happy with the way um, the specification is handling activities and some aspects of events. Um, and then if we've got time at the end, um, any other business, in case anybody wants to raise any other issues or, or questions. Um, so on that basis, I'm going to uh, jump straight into it. Um, please stop, uh, stop me and ask questions uh, as we go. Uh, so feel free to chip in at any point. Um, so uh, we last spoke a few weeks ago, um, uh, based on some of the discussion that we had at that meeting, uh, I published a revised um, version of the draft specification. Uh, that was on the 10th of February. Um, hopefully you've all seen that. Um, there are a few areas uh, I changed. Um, the, the the kind of key things that, uh, that ha key areas that had work are the things I want to discuss today. So um, I made some revisions to try and clarify the model um, and what we wanted to do around activities and activity lists. Um, and the specification also includes some extra notes around um, uh, events, reoccurring events. Um, and uh, one thing I, ch I changed, but I'm not still not sure whether this is the right thing to do, is I renamed what we were previously calling program to format. Um, and we can come back to that um, later on, because I'm not sure whether, I think it's something where we need to get the terminology right, but um, yeah, I, I want to kind of put that to you as a group. Um, in terms of uh, progress and plans for the specification, so I'm going to be taking the feedback that you give me this afternoon um, and add that to feedback that I've had on the mailing list so far. Um, so thanks to those of you that have, have chipped in um, to create a more complete specification. So it'll include um, data model diagram, um, I'm expanding out uh, a number of the areas of documentation, so uh, covering um, organizers, clubs, that kinds of things, um, and uh, quite a few worked examples to try and help illustrate how the specification supports a variety of use cases. My plan is to circulate that to the group um, uh, by the end of this week um, to incorporate comments so you can have a chance to look at it um, before we meet again. Um, so that's that's where we are at in terms of the spec. Um, I wanted to kind of just uh, recap how you can contribute to uh, this work ongoing. Um, I'm keen to get uh, more review, more detailed comments uh, on the specification outside of, of the chats that we have we're having every couple of weeks. Um, so the, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, obviously, we have the mailing list. Um, and it's great to see uh, some of the comments on there already. Um, but feel free to comment on any part of the specification. Um, it, I'm really keen to get feedback from people who are both going to be publishing and using um, the opportunity data to see whether the specification covers um, uh, your use cases. So does it address how you're storing data at the moment? Does it address how you would like to consume and use data? Um, as well as getting comments on the specification, um, it would really it be really helpful to get some example data. So in the work that I've been doing so far, I've been looking um, at the data that people have uh, already published openly um, using the, the, the real-time paging specification. Um, a few people have shared activity lists as well. So I've seen the um, Sports Week mega list. I've, had, I've seen a list from Sport England. And I've dug out the uh, list from open sessions. But if, uh, if there are other lists that you have in your system that you're happy to share, then that would be great as well. Because I think um, that's useful for two reasons. 
Firstly, it will help validate the model because we can see um, uh, more clearly how you're all managing this data. Um, but over time, it will also let us um, start to work on uh, identifying where there might be overlaps uh, on the, between those lists and um, start to converge perhaps on a more standardized list in the future. So yeah, so please do use a mailing list. Um, for those of you that are happy working in GitHub, um, there is a GitHub uh, repository that uh, hosts the specification um, and I'm using the issue tracker there to, to collect together discussion points for the group, um, tasks, you know, so things that work that needs to be done on the specification. So um, <clears throat> that provides another place to add comments uh, on individual areas of discussion um, or you can feel free to not only raise new issues but if you um, uh, think that the specification needs some wording changes, then I'm happy to take pull requests um, and, and suggested changes in that way rather than just sending emails around. So hopefully, you know, whether you're just comfortable working on a mailing list or comfortable working on GitHub, there's, there's a way for you to contribute. Um, uh, and the third way, um, which I'm kind of keen to get to as soon as possible, is to start testing out the data model with some real data. So um, after I've published the revised spec um, later this week, um, I'll be putting a request out on the main list to ask uh, those of you that are holding data at the moment um, to try out um, publishing some data to the spec. Um, just because I think the, the best way to validate it is to actually put some real world data into the model. Um, while I can use, I can pull together sample data from the data sources that I've got access to, uh, the more examples we get, the better. Um, so uh, that's another request that I'll be, I'll be making of, of you all fairly soon. Um, so uh, before I move on to the, the other areas of discussion, is there any uh, questions or comments on that so far? No, nope. um, not from me. Okay. Okay. Um, right then. In that case, uh, let's move on to the uh, uh, specification discussion. Um, so um, the the first bit I want to look at is around ac uh, activities and activity lists. Um, um, it, it's a, a the area that, that I think we've discussed the most, um, and my my personal feeling is that there's actually a, a lot of um, overlap and agreement in place, but I think um, we just need to step through it just to make sure that everyone is happy that the model is um, flexible enough to cover a variety of use cases. So I, I've got um, a few diagrams on the, on the next few slides that will um, hopefully illustrate um, uh, that the flexibility in the model. Um, and uh, kind of supplement the kind of wording that's in the specification because I, I, some of the feedback I've had I think just might be that the wording isn't quite right in describing the model rather than the, the model isn't correct. But um, that, that this is one of the things I want to test out with you all uh, this afternoon. Um, so, so briefly, so activities, they're then you know, named physical activities. Uh, in some cases, uh, there may be synonyms that you have in the system, but it's um, it's the kind of di you know dictionary defined things like cricket, walking, cycling. Um, we're we're going to be associating activities with events because then people can find events that involve the activities they're interested in. Um, and then uh, there will also this uh, there's also this idea of activity lists. So activity lists are a way to organise activities. Um, it, into simple lists or all the more complex groupings. Um, so as, as I was saying just now, I've seen, for example, the, the mega list and the, and the open sessions list. Um, and the, the modeling that I'm going to step through now is kind of based on what I see in, in, uh, in that sample data and some of the comments that we've had so far. So, um, so stepping through it, um, and again, um, chip in at any point if something is not clear, uh, or if you've got feedback. Um, so the, the simplest case is that um, when we associate activities with an event, 
we might just want to treat them as simple tags. Um, so I, I'm thinking here about the fact that there's, there's um, we're going to have a very broad set of data publishers um, who might have very different kind of technical platforms um, that manage uh, manage their data. So the simplest case is that physical activities are just tags um, or categories associated with an event. So here we've got a table cricket event uh, that has been tagged up as cricket and table cricket. Um, uh, so everything else builds on this, on top of this. Um, so um, uh, the idea, I think the, what I want to try and achieve with the model is that what people, are, the minimum that people have to provide is this kind of structure. It's just a tag, so a list of tags associated with an event. Um, but we know that these tags are about the activities rather than some other uh, uh, way of describing the event. Um, so building on that, um, rather than having, uh, let's say, a free text set of tags that um, uh, somebody hosting an event can just type in when they set up the event, we might have um, a controlled vocabulary, so a, uh, an activity list that identifies all of the types of activities that can be um, added to an event. So, for example, Open Sessions has an activity list, um, and it may be that when you're setting up an, an event, um, you have to choose from the existing activity list. So the extension here is all that we're saying is that rather than just tags, um, we're also capturing the fact that, that these uh, activities, cricket and table cricket, have been defined in an activity list in a particular system. So in this case, it's part of, um, we're saying it's part of the open sessions list. Um, and the benefit of doing that is that we can see uh, where the list came from. Um, and the, that list itself can be published as open data. So whereas we might have opportunity data that, that is just describing the event and a set of tags on the left-hand side of the diagram, we could also publish the activity list as a data set in itself. So the, the, some uh, metadata about the activity list, so where it came from, and the list of activities that it, it contains. Okay. Um, building on top of that, um, what I've seen in some of the discussion so far is that uh, some of you are, uh, have got more structure within the activity lists. So um, and the way that seems to be panning out is just a, a kind of broader and narrower relationships between physical activities. So here we're um, this is an example from the Sports Week mega list. Um, Table cricket um, is uh, classified within cricket as a broader activity. So that's, that's a relationship that could be captured in that activity list. Um, it doesn't ha have to be a part of the way that the opportunity data is published, but it could be uh, information that is shared um, when the activity list is published. So it doesn't add any complexity to the data publishing side for people who just want to publish um, simple um, opportunity data about events. Um, but um, given the knowledge of that structure, um, it may be that um, when you're publishing data, you just want to publish, um, uh, associate an event with the, the most specific activity. Um, but uh, somebody who uh, was using the full activity list within their system could, for example, use this broader relationship to offer somebody search results. You know, if they search for uh, table cricket, then they might also get search results that for cricket because it's clear from the activity list that there's a relationship between those two activities. Um, there's also uh, you know, more complex relationships that I can see. So there's often um, an individual activity uh, might be part of several broader activities or collection. So um, it might be part of ball games, it might be part of team sports, but they're all essentially the same, same relationship. It's a kind of a, a, some kind of hierarchy or grouping. Um, so the, the model that I'm proposing covers all of that. Um, it, it will provide a way to just publish um, both the kind of simple tags 
uh, but also share more complex lists as well. Um, so it, it covers the, 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 the range of use cases. So simple tagging, so flat lists with control vocabularies, as well as more complex hierarchies and, and groupings. Um, the, the model is based on um, a W3C standard called SCOS, called SCOS uh, which is short for uh, Simple Knowledge Organization System. It's basically just a way to publish exactly these kinds of category lists and taxonomies. Um, so it's been standardized and in use for quite a while, um, and it has all of this kind of relationships and flexibilities in there. Um, and all of the example data that I've seen so far kind of fits within that, that model. Um, and I think the, the other thing that I do want to try and draw out at this point is that um, the, it might be useful over time to be able to I'll go back. So for example, identify that uh, there are overlaps between the sports suite mega list and the open, the open session list because they've both got entries for cricket and table cricket and it may, there may be scope to start to standardize on some of the structure or come up with a common um, activity list for the for the sector but the the steps towards achieving that i think are firstly sharing firstly agreeing the model and then sharing the data so we can actually see and identify the overlaps uh, and then working out the best way to to converge um, so that's how that's the direction that the the activities and activity lists um, work is going um, is there does anyone have any um, feedback or comments on that so far Lee I wondered if you could just say something about the standardization of activity lists and um, I'm not sure if you mentioned it and I missed it what what um, is that part of the specification or so what, how does that take form? Um, so, um, so as part of the as part of the work that we're doing here, um, we'll need to do, we'll need to define a way to publish activity lists um, in probably several different formats. So that'll give us a way to start to to share these this structure. Um, in terms of uh agreeing on there being a standard list um that can be an activity that can carry on as part of this community group um you know it, it can you know the discussion can happen within this forum um but the um i what i i haven't got a good sense yet about whether there's general buy-in that we need to have a single list or whether um just the fact that we might be able to share all the different lists and identify mappings and overlaps between them would be would get everybody a kind of a useful step forward um, you know so quite quite often you know you just you just see when people are publishing these kind of uh, taxonomies that just identifying the links um, is a useful step in itself um, does, does that help answer the question I think so I'm, I'm still um, wondering because um, open sessions um, I'm working on open sessions and um, the list we, we didn't start with a particularly well one I, I felt was particularly good and what we've had is is um, where users have wanted to add something that the list hasn't um, addressed then we let them do that and then we approve it or um, you know, say you can't have that because um, it's not something users would search for um, so we could basically do with um, a better list and um, yeah I guess I'm just thinking about um, when we might be able to sort of see where the overlap is between um, the various lists that, that we have and um, kind of can use it to categorize sessions in a way that people will find when they're searching for them. Yeah, so I mean, so from your point of view, if the um, say the Safe Sports Suite were publishing their list as open data, would you have started from that rather than taking stuff from Wikipedia and elsewhere? So, so, so in my experience, there's there's a kind of 
there's, there's different paths that we can take. It might be that there are already uh, uh, good, some strong candidates for a, a kind of uh, a, a list for the sector and sharing them can help uh, identify which one we might want to select. Mm -hmm. The other way that this stuff can happen is that people just converge on one list over time. Mm -hmm. um, so it happens more organically that certain systems just start to use a, um, you know, the, the sports suite list or a list from Sport England, wherever. Um, and so it, it kind of just happens through kind of network effects. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't have a good sense yet about where, um, what the right steps forward are. Um, but what, at the point when um, people agree that, okay, there, there should be an open active activity list, then there ought to be some governance put around it to cover the, some of the things that you were saying, like how, how do we agree when new terms get added to the list? How do we decide when structure gets changed? So there'll have to be something in place to kind of manage that. Sorry, Lee, sorry, it's Nick from Sport England. Yeah, I mean, I would agree that it's probably a bit of a two-pronged approach. So you're right in terms of you're mixing and matching the list to start off with, so people feel comfortable. <clears throat> and then, but over time, I mean, certainly from our point of view, we want to get towards a single list that is, you know, and, and what you're trying to do for this group is hopefully get ownership of the whole list that people will add to it over time. And I think that, again, this, the problem of the, the publication or where we are the list at the moment, because we haven't got someone on from, I don't think we've got anyone from GLL or, or the operators on the call. You know, they're the ones who keep, you know, from when you surface this data up, and Ben from IMEAN probably has this when he's, he's talked to the operators, when we, we <coughs> look at this data that comes back, you know, that their sports list is programs, includes programs, includes all this other stuff that we're trying to clear out all that gunk for the consumer. So I think we do need to kind of move towards a standardised list. Okay. It might be helpful there, Nick. Uh, I think Chris Phelps is from Serco on the call. Uh, is that right? Um, yes. So we have a, we have a letter operator uh, represented in the room. I snuck him when no one was looking. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So there's, so we might need to have a kind of separate discussion around how that uh, how that standardization process happens um, but from the comments I've had so far it seems like it, it is definitely a worthwhile step just to get the lists shared in their current form um, so with the, with the, the model that I stepped through there um, does anyone does anyone have any use cases or um, examples of where it, it, it it doesn't work for them or, or, or does it you think it covers uh, your particular needs i'm not sure if it's helpful but i, I i'm just because i obviously because i know everybody here but um, I, I know that other people might not um to, to categorize because i know we've got um we've got brent and Stu here from fettel and they're both going to be taking this data and putting it in front of users to help people make bookings as is jamie from my local pitch um who's here as well um and and ben from get active um, so there's a there's a kind of few people here who are really focused on engaging uh, an audience, and then on the other side, um, Chris is representing kind of more the back end and and where you would uh, have this data kind of initially categorised so that it can be presented to the audience and passed to the others, um, and um, and and Duncan and, and Andy are kind of in the in the kind of in the background in terms of um, standardising, but but not for either uh, particular reason. So. Um, I, uh, I wonder what is it worth us kind of talking about whether this works for both sides um, around does it work for the consumers to, to present the data for, for Brent Stew and, and for Jamie and does it on the other side work uh, and, and for Ben does it on the other side work for Chris in terms of categorization is I don't know is that might, that might be helpful um, thanks for that, um, from my position uh, it does certainly make sense to have one single list um, and just one thought I had based on that presentation Lee was uh, having tags for each sport and activity uh, and I suppose one um, thought about the way our platform works is you have specific formats that can be played at specific sports but uh, you can't really change so as long as there is some sort of a relationship that's fairly standardized between um, formats and sports, 
um, and the, I think that's also the tag you were describing. Um, it may well be that's what you were intending, um, uh, but we've explored looking at whether to allocate a tag to a sport, but we just thought we would better uh, bracket it within the same, within a kind of uh, more official uh, capacity. Okay, that's useful. Just, just to test my understanding, can you, can you give me an example of, you know, a concrete example of where you've got sport and format, etc.? Yeah, so we do um, sport format and surface. So sport is football. Uh, format is 11 a side, uh, 5 a side, 7 a side. And then the assist is uh, AstroTurf, 3G AstroTurf. Uh, and the same with cricket. We have cricket, full size and nets. Um, and uh, it goes kind of on and on. Um, but what you wouldn't want is um, football uh, and then the cricket nets being uh, possible to be allocated to football because obviously that doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's... Right. So you, you define your, in your system, you've got a relationship between the, the sport and the format then. Uh, yes, exactly, um, and that's predefined. Um, so um, uh, when you're structuring the searches uh, and the way you present the data, um, then there's a kind of standardised relationship between different sports and formats. Okay. Okay. So I think the model can encompass that, um, but as you say, you might want to clar clarify that. Um, what that broader, narrow relationship means in that context. Um, or identifying that a particular activity is a, is, is a format rather than a... Yes, exactly, because, for example, indoor can be applied to many different sports. Um, if you to put that as a format or a surface. Um, but five-a-side would normally be just for football, so there are kind of interchanging relationships. But uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this this also touches on uh, I think some comments that Nick made around um, uh, disciplines and some other kind of category ways to kind of categorize events. So one approach to this is that I think you you can just expand the activity list, so you end up with a kind of more hierarchy, more collection. Another approach is that you just have you associate more tags with the event. So whereas in the diagrams I was showing that. Um, there are a set of activity tags. Um, there may be tags that describe um, uh, the surface, for example. So you don't then have to have a hierarchy, hierarchical relationship. It's the fact that the event says, this is cricket uh, on AstroTurf. And you don't have to kind of worry about all the combinations of different formats of cricket on all combinations of surfaces. Yes, exactly. I think that's quite, uh, quite good. You, you also have... Um and just in our case, we have uh, sports specific um, uh, tags as such, like um, uh, surfaces. But then you have other tags, which could be floodlights or changing rooms or um, uh, other amenities. But I'm not sure if that bit is relevant for us right now. Okay. Uh, but I did notice in the active places that doesn't necessarily use those, that useful data, for example, like this is an extremely useful bit of data. So the active places that can actually list um, floodlights, which can be a problem. Um, and um, uh, th that would be very useful for any future list. Okay. So things like, um, so floodlights, so those are a, a feature of a, of a venue or of a, you know, a playing field. Um, Sorry, there are, sorry, Lee, floodlights, yeah, they are, they will be specific to a facility because you normally, you would have, I mean, if you take grass pitches, for example, you might have grass, you might have floodlights on just one individual pitch or you might be on the whole lot, but it's unlikely. I mean, with a 3G pitch, you'll have them on, it will be attached to a 3G pitch probably. Um, there'll be floodlight athletics, floodlights, certain other things, that, but they tend to be very facility specific rather than place specific, i.e. the venue. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so on. So going back to things like surface, then. Um, you know the list of different types of services that people might might play on. That could be that would be a. Um, well, it wouldn't be an activity list, but we'd need to have a, a, a list of things, a list of those that could be published and shared. Um, so I think for all of these things where we're standardizing ways to, dis to describe or tag events, we'll need to agree on some control vocabulary that can go into the, into the specification. Yes, and I think compared to what I've seen in the activity data, that's a little bit more straightforward. Um, there's certainly not as many uh, types of surfaces as you get activities. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any, any other comments from anyone? Uh, it's Andy from Active Devon. Just to um, uh, add to the, that discussion, uh, thinking of outdoor ac um, activities, um, things like mountain biking and, and orienteering and others, there would be a very, it's not a surface, but it's the same principle where there would be grading of the, the, the routes or courses or trails which would be very significant in terms of people's, the appropriateness for people. Yes, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's useful, thank you. Um, okay. So am I getting a sense then that people are just gen are generally happy with, with this approach? What's Chris think? <laughs> Sorry to call you out there, Chris. Um, yeah, I mean, I've literally been on this group since yesterday afternoon. So I've not, I'm not entirely sure what the larger scope and objective is going to end up being. Um, but the idea of like a standard set of categories for activities and associating them to things which are broadly similar and then subcategories of, you know, um, surfaces, so, you know, grass or clay or difficult terrain or whatever it's going to be. Um, kind of covers the majority of of uh, the combinations we'd be looking at. Um, whenever we do sort of a, a configuration of like a book or activity, it's a combination of um, an activity, a location, and potentially a staff member. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of scope to think about um, kind of the, the staff being a searchable thing. So if there's a, you know, a particular um, quality of instructor you're looking at, they've got to have like a, a qualification to teach a thing. That might be something worth considering as well. I don't know if that's kind of a bit beyond the scope we're looking at at the moment. No, I think I think that is in is in scope, um, at least to the extent of um, uh, the the model uh, will have. In fact, I can show you the diagram. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, so we've been we've been discussing the kind of top right piece just now, um, but. Um, the events that are in the opportunity data um, can have, be associated with the organizers, which could be both a person and organization. So this is where we can recognize uh, clubs or particular hosts for an event. Um, but an event can also be associated with a contributor, which I think more generally would be other staff uh, involved in, um, in hosting or running the event. Um, so that give a I think a way to kind of capture some of that and you know if there are qualifications and that will be further attributes associated with, with the person or, or the organization. Cool, that seems to make a lot of sense. Okay. So Lee, sorry it's, it's Duncan here, where would the tagging fit into this? Are we talking about in the activity? So the, it's the, the the diagram the, the diagrams I showed before that it's the so in the center we've got the event and then there's this uh, activity arrow over to the yeah activity so that's the tag you know so um, either the activity is going to be a simple name or there might it might have additional information associated with it so it might be related to to other names or we might even add you know descriptions and images and things to the activities as well. So working through the example of table cricket, mm -hmm. um, what would uh, that would then have a name in the physical activity, and that name would be table cricket. Yeah. So yeah. So table cricket is a physical activity. Its yep. name is yep. table cricket. Yeah. 
Um, and then the tagging and the associating to cricket, table sports, ball sports, that word, that's what you tried capturing through your broad and narrow or sorry? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It is the idea of broad and narrow, obviously to find things which are categorized in similar methodologies. So cricket is like cricket nets, which is like table cricket. Is there any idea around people who enjoyed cricket also enjoyed these other activities, which may not be in the same category, but may have the same kind of kind of psychological interests kind of to them? Yeah, so um, so SCOS also has, so some of the, the naming I've, I've taken from SCOS here, and, and one of the things that we can you know, discuss uh, uh, in the future is, is whether we want to just kind of use that naming because it, it aligns us with the standard or whether we want to change the names. But um, as well as broad and narrow relationships, um, there is a more general uh, kind of related relationship so that you can um, just link together two different activities. You know, so based, you know, based on knowledge, for example, that the people interested in X are also interested in Y, you might choose to put that into your, uh, into your activity list as an extra relationship. Super. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm mindful of the time. So um, unless there's any other kind of urgent bits of feedback on activity lists, I'm just going to move us on to um, uh, the discussion around events. Um, so I, I think this is, is fairly straightforward. Um, um, so within the model, we're going to be uh, using event to cover as a the broad term to, to, to describe both individual occurrences. So a gym class that is happening tonight, as well as uh, events that happen to a schedule so the gym class that happens every wednesday um, uh, and the really just the difference would be whether an individual event has a specific date and time or whether it's associated with a schedule um, uh, in the uh, in the, the next revision of the specification i'll have more detail on on the scheduling but it will be using um, the structure that come that is already described for uh, iCalendar. Um, so that so that standard already defines a way to um, uh, capture what are called the recurrence rules. So when you you know when you set up a recurring event in your calendar, um, there's already a kind of well understood model for doing that. So rather than re-standardizing that, it's something that we can just um, incorporate into what we're doing. Um, uh, so the, the model, the, so the, the specification at the moment refers to sessions, um, but really that is just as a way for us to have, just have another term to refer to uh, individual, uh, single occurrences. It's not gonna be a feature of the model. It's just sometimes when we're talking, it's it useful to, to agree uh, that um, we're talking about an individual occurrence, a session rather than a recurring event. Hi, it's uh, Andy from Active Devon. Um, I did send an email around very much earlier. I don't know if anybody saw it, but um, one of uh, we're doing a huge amount of work around getting people active outdoors. And what struck me reading the spec um, uh, for this meeting, um, Lee, was the, the way that a lot of the um, activities that we're involved in in that work is uh, not really covered as an event as such. Your, um, a, a couple of concrete examples would be something like a mountain bike trail at a forest park, where actually you're wanting to, it's, you're, you're offering the opportunity, it's structured, it's controlled, but it's not necessarily, and it has a, an opening hours effectively, but it's not it's, uh, an organized bookable event as such at a certain time. Um, and there are lots of examples, uh, probably the majority of the examples in the getting active outdoors uh, environment and the connecting to nature kind of world are in, in that kind of vein. So um, what I was suggesting in the email was perhaps extending table point two to call it actually opportunities rather than events and sessions. I am very comfortable with the definitions you've described so far for events and sessions for the context where you have those uh, obvious, obviously uh, 
time constrained and bookable um, events. Um, but whether or not we should also include under that heading, um, the best word I could come up with was excursions, but where you have um, those kinds of trails or it might be circular walks or whatever it might be, um, orienteering um, courses, permanent orienteering courses, which um, you want to make available as an offer, uh, opportunity for somebody um, uh, to discover and, and come and use, but you um, are not needing them to necessarily book it, but we do then want to find ways of monitoring that, that those people are using it and there's other ways of doing that. Um, I just put that here because obviously now's the time if we were going to make that change to make it rather than later. Yeah, okay. That, that's useful. Um, so the, I, I did see the email and my first thought was I was wondering whether the, this is a, an aspect of, div, of um, so you mentioned the park for example, so is the fact that there is a walking trail the park, a, a, something that we want to describe about the park rather than as, as an independent opportunity? Um, I, I'm thinking I, uh, the, the sort of best examples would be things like permanent uh, orienteering courses, although there would be also be opportunities where there were temporary ones. Um, we have in uh, Devon obviously lots and lots of uh, trails and paths and circular walks from the Southwest Coach Path, the national parks, any number of organizations that you could be promoting as opportunities um, where it is structured there is a, a map there's a definite starting point there's ways you can actually engage with people around though their use of those things but um your it, it isn't a defined event your um it, it's in mostly it's going to be independently uh, driven as to when people actually make use of them sorry lee nick here um i mean we, we've I mean, now we've got some of the British cycling data. We have, we started to have some of the mountain, I mean, it's going on at the moment, some of the mountain bike trails for winter, which well, British cycling type ones. But we're putting those, those go under facilities. So, I mean, there is a question under the facilities, should there be natural trike facilities and what are they defined as? Because then you get into is what Andy's saying, permanent orienteering courses. They could be crags or mountains. They can be long distance footpaths. <laughs> But then we'd have to do, very much close that definition down to say they're not um, including your standard kind of routes on your kind of normal, you know, side streets and, and footpaths. Um, but then there is the bit Andy says about what do you do about those managed or those, you know, there'll be, there's a lot of user generated content where people put up, um, you know, from their Strava routes and things like that. So where does that fit? It's kind of a bit of an uneasy one because it's not an organised activity, but people follow those routes and then you know chase them out. So I don't know whether it fits then under the under the events or not. Yeah, that's interesting. So are you suggesting that that kind of user generated user generated content needs to be incorporated here, or I'm am just throwing it out there because it it, it is out there. You know, they, they, all that stuff is there. So you take Ordnance Survey on their website at the moment, people are publishing routes. And in fact, Ordnance Survey have people who are kind of registered people who publish their own routes on their open data site, which they kind of, which they know are correct routes and challenging routes. And there's lots of information about it. Um, so it's a question about where does that fit in the future? I mean, it's not, we have to necessarily define it completely at the moment, but you know, it's, I suppose what we're trying to do at the moment is to throw out where these things might go. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, so that that yeah that 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 is really interesting and certainly something that um, there's a few different scenarios where I think orienteering have something similar where there is orienteering courses uh, that you can just go and find and you just literally turn up and there's a printable you can print a map out and then go and do the course it, you don't need to actually do it with anyone uh, the, so uh, there's there's a few of those where there's a it's almost, it is very I can see absolutely agree with you it's very like facility similar to that um and the other thing i was going to raise in uh, matt lord's absence he sends his apologies is um is clubs because obviously um uh, clubs are another type of thing so a club is at a facility and a club runs events um and you might you might want to know about a club or know about the facility the club is in um and it depends on the sport as to whether the club um you know, does the club run on a particular in a particular facility 
or in on or in, does it does it use a particular trail i don't know maybe that's too um maybe those two things aren't that connected but yeah but there's so maybe there's maybe there's facilities clubs and and, and events are three things potentially and and the, and the question of is a facility the same as a course or an outdoor trail um the running that there's the running guys do this as well there's running trails that you can get off the national trust website and they're just a trail yeah i found similar um lee i can probably dig it out and point you in the right direction um but when I was doing some of the initial research, there was definitely a lot of about, uh, a lot about walks and that kind of thing. But it also tied into the tagging, the attributes as well. Um, and I think that some of that, it could be interesting because it's potentially quite seasonal as well. So coastal walks in particular, there may be changes in routes and things like that. Um, and obviously now we're getting into the kind of the outliers in terms of how different that data is. Um, but I definitely think that there's something there around not limiting it purely to kind of traditional sports facilities, things like that. Um, but also having that flexibility to have something that's potentially self-guided or um, can be done by anybody anywhere as a form of an opportunity. But also that same route or same bit of information could be also attached to like a walking group or a club or as Nick says, you know, something, some entity in its own right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So that that is not direct. None of that is really directly addressed in the specification currently. Um, in as far as it is, it's Sorry. just facilities. I, I when looking at and reading it this morning, um, Lee, I um, felt it, uh, from we're we're working with a lot of different partners on the outdoor sector just because of Devon being what it is, and um, the only. Um, uh, in terms of the events um, and making those discoverable as an activity, if I'm looking for a coast walk or a, a mountain bike route or whatever it might be, um, the, the only thing that really caught me in the specification that you have at the moment, the, the description, was the, the way that it um, talks of an event quite reasonably as having an agreed time and date, whereas uh, the difference for uh, an excursion as an opportunity is simply that it's uh, play, it's a way you can take part in that activity um, but it's not constrained by time and date um, and it's um, it, but, but having said that and why I thought the it fitted there nicely was that there may well be constraints around actually there are constraints about opening times or dawn to dusk or whatever it might be um, so the, the the kind of basic uh, framework worked just as well. It was just uh, constraining it to purely a uh, specific date and a specific time wouldn't be appropriate for your kind of excursion opportunity. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. That that is that is useful. I think I think you're right there. But um, yeah. I actually wonder as well, Lee. Sorry, just to jump in. Um, something just triggered in my mind there, Andy, um, in terms of your use of the word session as well could be quite interesting because, um, and forgive me if this is covered, but something like um, swimming, for instance, is quite open and you do have different opening hours um, generally for the facility, but then within that you might have different restrictions for a particular session um, in terms of it might be adults only or it might be a swimming club or something like that. So there might be this need to potentially break it down a little bit more as well in that kind of instance. So you've got your overall times, you know, days of the year, it is open apart from Christmas Day, Boxing Day, that kind of stuff. Um, but then you've got the more granular start and finish points as well. Mm -hmm. So for, but for swimming, isn't that, isn't that just an event that there is a, I don't know, say a mother and baby swimming session or that there is, um, I'll give another example. Um, surely there's, there's still a kind of a smaller time there's an agreed time within a day or a schedule that, it, that 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 type of opportunity is available for quite possibly and i think this comes back to your original point about um once we have the model it would be really good to start filling in the real data so that we can actually go okay so is that an event is that something you know below that or is it above it do we need to actually spit these out a little bit better yeah, yeah okay yeah, I like the idea of of of, of recognizing a, a broader a, a broader class of opportunity, which is not tied, which has all, much of the same properties as an event, except for the the timing schedule. I think. 
that would have, would avoid making the model more complex um, because we can still attach all of the same properties to it. Um, so yeah, okay, I'll I'll take that on board and um, and look at including something in the in the next revision there. So just a quick question. Um, yeah, you probably covered this previously. Are we considering a scenario where there's an API driving this this activity this master activity list? Or are we talk about this being like a manual process where you're uploading your schedules and that's being dis being displayed to the customer. Um, so um, yes. So the, the the spec that we're kind of discussing now is really just to kind of get a model for the the, the domain agreed um, and a way to kind of express that in. Um, you know, uh, you know, a structured term. Um, I plan to put together a separate spec that sort of says how to go about publishing that. Um, and some of the groundwork that that we did at the ODI in this space was identifying the kind of different different ways that that data might be made available. Some people are already using. Uh, there's a spec that Nick worked on called the real time paging spec, which provides an API to harvest events or another types of opportunity data so that you can publish it and then other people can ingest that into their system. Um, but other, others, it might be easier for other data publishers to just publish regular data downloads, um, which might be data downloads of the activity list or it might be for opportunities or their facilities. Um, so I think there'll end up being a few ways to kind of publish and share this type of data. Okay. No, we'll I only... Yeah, it only, only worries me, just as a, a, a from an operator point of view, because we all, all change say, our timetables in terms of workout classes and swimming and other activities you know, on a fairly regular basis. Um, I wouldn't want to have to be constantly giving massive sort of upload files to update um, timetables, because it could change you know, every single week. And because we give our individual data centers the opportunity to define their own timetables, they may change something by becoming aware of it, so then we wouldn't be able to update you. Um, so yeah, definitely a sort of API approach that sort of refreshes on a regular basis is going to be key for us to make this work. Yes, the, yeah, the, the, you know, I think uh, our preference would be that, that you would be publishing this through an API that other people can come and, and access rather than um, it being kind of bulk, bulk downloads. But we just want to make sure that everyone can contribute, you know, no matter what kind of technical platform they're on. Super, fantastic. Cool. Okay, um, so uh, unless there are other comments on the kind of event side, the, the, the last kind of question that um, I wanted to kind of put to you was this issue around um, program and format. Right, so um, in the previous version of the spec, um, we had a, uh, hopefully you can see the slides, shout if you can't, um, we, a, use the term program to just to describe to refer to the, the different ways that an event can be run um, so this a program would um, cover things like uh, Les Mills body pump learn to row back to netball maybe some of the other kind of branded ways to run individual activities um, and the intention was to kind of separate out programs from activities so they, um, you know, they wouldn't necessarily be part of an activity list. It could just be another way to tag or describe an event. Um, in the last revision, I, I, I renamed program to format. Uh, the reason I did that is in, on the last call, there was, we had some discussion around events and schedules. Um, and uh, there were one or two comments that led me to think that some, and at least in some cases, people are using program as a kind of broad uh, kind of event or like as a campaign that they might be running in the sector or with you know targeted at uh, particular types of people um and i, I kind of want to, i didn't want to uh i wanted to make sure that there was some clarity around what we meant by um you know the term program and if there was some confusion there then i was just going to suggest format you know as a you know as in the format of the event uh, as an alternate um but I had some feedback after the revisions to say that that maybe program would have been better after all. Um, so I just wanted to ask you all, which, which term do you think is better? Is, is program, does it have a well understood industry definition already? Um, and is it, is it the one that's in the spec or 
um, do you think we should be using a slightly different term to avoid any confusion? Anyone want to jump in? Nick, Nick from Sport England, this, you had, I think, had some comments, so I'm going to single you out. Um, so do you prefer programme versus format? I can't remember what my comments were now. Um, I, think, I think the funny thing about format is often it is, it can, when you get into the sports, make connotations to about certain elements of how different disciplines are within a sport, whilst the programme is simply a, a wider kind of definition that you could probably apply both in terms of, in terms of what an operator would, would apply plus a governing body would apply. I think that's what one of the things we're kind of raising about it. Okay. I mean, one of the reasons for breaking it out separately to activities was, I think, you know, was partly because of what you were highlighting, that, that it trying to deal with all of the kind of branded, uh, not just the branded ways of running events, but also the kind of variety of ways that um, individual organisers might choose to describe their particular event. There's so many and varied that, that trying to incorporate them within activity list would just make managing that kind of list um, a major overhead. So if we kind of recognise that there were two different types of things here, then we can just use programme as a more free form tag um, uh, and, and try to maintain a kind of activity list that was a bit more, um, a bit more controlled. If that makes sense. Um, but in, I mean, in chatting this over with a few people, there's lots of cases where uh, I, th you know, I think Zumba was the example of something that has gone from being a kind of format to being a kind of fairly recognised activity. So there's, there's clearly a lot of overlap between these two, in the, between activities and programmes. Um, Uh, yeah, I, it's Andy. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nick. No, so I was. I, yeah, I was just thinking about that because I was thinking when you start to look at that for some people, there may be the program. There may be a number of different activities that go under these. That could be almost across different sports or something. That's the other thing I was going to. I was just going to add in there. Um, uh, I was uh, just going to say, thinking at it from. Um, the point of view of uh, a lot of the partners we work with from health and others who have interest in getting people active and in, um, in this space, the um, format I think works better for, for them. I was thinking of things like walking for health. So you will have walking, but um, a program wouldn't quite fit for, for them in terms of um, uh, language for uh, insofar as they would engage with the, the data at this level. Um, I think they might find that confusing, but maybe we just not find the right find, found the right term yet. Either way, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, we just we just leave it as it is for the moment, and then think as we develop and maybe do some of the the use cases, then some of it might drop out. I don't know. I got a wording for it. Okay. Um, so, aside from the naming, then. Um, just, just the, is the concept sound? You know, is it well, well described in the specification as something that's distinct from activities? I, I think so. I, I would echo Nick's comment. I think it's when we actually see some more examples that right. will. That, that test it. Maybe we need to think of some examples a bit beyond uh, outside of the scope of the more mainstream sports uh, examples we've got there at the moment to test it a bit. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, and yeah, I suspect that the pe there's the, on, of the people on this call, not, there's not many people which would have a strong opinion either way. I mean, potentially, mm -hmm. if you've got Jade from EMDP in here. Or um, or Kim again. I think they would because I think programs is a lot more prevalent in some types of uh, sports. Although I, I mean, Chris might be running some Les Mills stuff, so has a, a view on that. Um, yeah. I say I haven't actually seen the spec yet, so I probably can't effectively comment on what is and isn't right. Okay, but I mean, do you do, so some so looking at the exact example side on the slide, so. Les Mills body pump, would that be something that you would normally 
that it, in your experience you would put into an activity list or is it a, 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 some other attribute that you would associate with an event? I mean, we, we would describe like, a workout class program as a scheme of multiple different workout classes and the program is kind of the definition for the schedule of those multiple activities in there. Um, we would probably, we probably call it individual class like an activity if, if that's any use to you. Yeah, that, well that, that, was the def that was where I thought there was two slightly different views because what you were describing there is a, a kind of a schedule, an actual program series of events is one way of defining a program but then there's an there's the something like learn to row which is a, a way to actually structure a, an individual event and there's no connection between those events it, it, people also refer to that as a program and it felt like there's there's a need to distinguish between those two different things yeah first program is definitely a term which encompasses a range of activities on different time states and locations okay that's totally different from what Jade was saying, so that's excellent. <laughs> we, need to, we need to think of another word that cuts across the both worlds somehow, whatever that is. Okay. All right. Well, maybe, maybe I need to um, talk to Jade a bit more as well, just to see what, what her thoughts are. She's promised me some feedback on the spec, so um, uh, we'll wait and see what, what she provides. But I think for a minute then, I'll leave, I'll leave it as format. Um, We can we can always come back to this. Format seems feels odd, I have to say. Well, okay. it also the format is the same as Jamie was talking about the format of the uh, pitch uh, in terms of the, the yeah, turf thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm fairly relaxed. I think a program sounds absolutely sensible. Uh, format sounds weird um, because you're talking about you're talking about a series of repeated things. If that's what you're trying to talk about, isn't it? Of the same thing. No, not quite. It's that it's that if you go to, um, uh, so so Nick, you've got some good examples when we were chatting about this before. But uh, so brand, brand will be another way of saying it is Les Mills body pump is a brand of uh, a certain type of, of exercise which you might classify as an activity okay. of of aerobics or something. So you could have the activity as aerobics, but the um, the brand is Les Mills body pump, or with the rowing example. Uh, the activity is rowing, but the program of learn to row is a is a type of uh, rowing where it's a six week course and you learn you start at the beginning and you get to the end and learn to row, or uh, netball, uh, where uh, get back back into netball is a program where you could just drop in and you run and you, uh, anyone can drop in and, and kind of play okay. or bam, or back to okay. badminton. Badminton's the same. No strings. Badminton, you drop in, so it's not necessarily a. Um, there's a number yeah. of sessions running. Well, yeah. it, it could be from the point of the provider, it could be because you might be running a, a yeah. 10, 10 sessions of ten no strings right badminton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But from the consumer's perspective, the fact there's 10 weeks of no strings badminton running doesn't affect them because they just they drop in to any one of those yeah, yeah, and yeah. they just join in. So it, it, it's coming from the purely from the consumer's perspective. We don't necessarily need to talk about it as a, a stream of events because they only might yeah. care about one. But right. sometimes it's a course. I sometimes, I sometimes wonder then maybe maybe you have a term that's a little bit different like brand because we're not talking about a consumer facing bit of language here are we we're talking about a back-end language effectively a database language right not yeah. language, but, you know, uh, terminology um and the problem often is that if you use terminology like program we all agree that somebody else uses that maybe in their, their consumer facing stuff to mean something different and it gets confusing was you pick up something almost a completely different term like brand, actually that's not going to cause any confusion on the, on the front end. Just a thought. Yeah, okay. So just for me, the idea of brands is, is quite interesting. Um, as you think about um, something like, like spinning, spinning is a branded term. Um, so some of our locations have spinning, some have spin in, some have spin, some have studio cycling, some have Lesmos RPM. Um, and I know a big part of this is to kind of bring them all together into kind of one category. But just from like a, a, a brand perspective, do we need to be able to segment out where we have a Les Mills branded indoor cycling thing, a spinning branded one, and like a generic homebrew kind of thing? Is, is that going to be kind of important to customers? Or, and to copyright holders, more importantly? 
Yeah, it's trying to, I suppose, it's trying to work out what answer exactly that question. Right? So knowing what to expect when you turn up at an event feels like a, a useful thing from a consumer point of view. So knowing, you know, if you've, if you've just moved gym, knowing that you're going to do Les Mills body pump no matter where you are, it seems like a, a useful thing. Um, as a event provider, I would imagine that you'd want to have a brand or something, but how, you know, knowing the diff, I wouldn't expect a consumer necessarily to know the difference between, you know, spinning and spinning and RPM and stuff, but that's where we could, there could be extra information attached to them. I was just gonna say, Chris, from, from, I mean, having looked through doing a project with Birmingham, which has had some of your data from Circo, which I know that some of it has come from, been passed on it, it was historical data the amount of different names that are given to things as you say spinning when you let loose someone in a, a sports center who then renames it all the time um, oh it's, is, it's a car is, crash is it awful yeah exactly <laughs> so i think being able to take it out because then you're kind of giving them the power by putting it in a kind of whatever you're going to call it brand or format you can, they can call it whatever it is, whatever they, they can call it, all their wacky new name, whatever they want to call it, but at least then it's still linked back to the, the, the basic activity. Yeah, absolutely. I think from the way it's built in the system, they're, they're a defined thing saying this is RPM, but then they have the ability to name their session. Um, it, is, it is technically a, a free text field. So the good ones call it RPM, some might call it Big Dave's RPM, and just make you very unhappy. Um, but yeah, if we can tie the, the back end factors that make it an RPM pass into this, this in the system, we can kind of bypass the, the local naming. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, the physical activity stuff we talked about earlier is, is that kind of RPM indoor cycling piece. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree that, that just being able to name the events is a way to kind of incorporate some of that branding stuff. Um, but I think what, what we've just proposed so far in the model is that those are just an extra, an extra property uh, that, that will allow that to be uh, incorporated. Well, my understanding of this is that the, the objective the first time around at least maybe this from the previous calls was that we were going to try and get an activity list and the programs is an interesting thing but we if we try and get a list of activities such as cricket and football that would be a quite a straightforward exercise if we try and get a list of programs comprehensively covering spinning spinning and however other misspellings or, or purposeful misspellings there are um, that we could be a, a bit of a bigger exercise and I, I think a, a, a previous point raised was the maintenance of that is also a bigger overhead because people are constantly trying to differentiate themselves with new brands etc um so i don't know is it i guess we're, what we're not saying is I, I presume what we're not saying is we're going to try and create the mother list of all branded activities this is more about saying what are we going to call that thing just so that we know when someone's got a free text field and they're writing in the field they're writing in the program the, the text the free text field is called brand or it's called program or it's called whatever uh, and there's another field which is a drop down which is activity which is using our standardized list of activities and that's actually very well um, we've consolidated that so there's only 150 of them but we know that that covers until someone creates a new one but they, they, we got to maintain that as well but not in the same uh, level of effort yeah. Yeah. yes exactly yeah yeah, yeah. I, was just, I just want to say that in some cases it strikes me that it might, so a, a product like um, Body of Fitness might uh, act like a synonym. Um, so in the case of someone looking for Bikram Yoga, they might not know they're looking for um, that. Uh, when they might type in hot yoga and be looking for Bikram or vice versa. And it can work the same in sort of a few different areas. Spinning might be another one. So in, so in practice, it might be um, a synonym behave that way. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I have no idea how we're going to somehow decide what is and isn't an activity because hot yoga and Bikram yoga are, are different. Bikram yoga has got 26 moves that you do during the course of the session. Hot yoga has got 40 plus and it changes depending on where you're doing it. Um, and so they are different, but then, you know, but they are 
similar as well. So the, I suppose at some point we're going to need to draw a line and say, because you could say Les Mills would say the same about their RPM class. They'd say, well, we have a particular format. All the classes are the same. We've got all these, you know, these things that mean that they're better than the non-branded version. So I, I guess it's, it's going to be it's going to be difficult to draw a line in terms of con what, what consumers need to know versus because if you just can't categorize bikram yoga and hot yoga under one activity name then users could find and, and link both together and they'd both come up as kind of have you seen this have you seen that related things yeah um it, it, yeah what, what you do lose with just synonyms is um the ability to you know to link out to that kind of information that describes what the difference between those two things are. Um, you know, in the cases where you know it's useful for somebody to understand. Um, yeah, um, I, I mean, another way to look at it is just that um, the activity list stuff is just a, is, is just trying to separate out the bit that we can think is going to be could be reasonably standardizable, and the kind of brand program stuff is all of the kind of churn that's happening at the bottom of that list where people are coming up with new stuff and some of it sticks around for long enough and it might actually become you know like some that might become a well-known well-understood activity so at that point could be promoted into a more standardized activity list um and but at the moment we just need a way to kind of capture those both of those bits of information and i, I think within the model there's there's we've got flexibility that we're not we're not locking ourselves into a single way of doing that, which I think from a standards point of view is good, but it just means that we will need to give people a little bit of guidance on on how to kind of publish their data, um, so it's consistently presented. Um, but that that's that comes back to the need to actually test this out with real data, um, you know, from real systems. Um, Okay, so we're about to come to the end of our time. That's um, been a really useful session for me. There's lots of great feedback on, on the specification and some extra things to work on. Um, before I close up for today, is there any other uh, questions that people have or uh, any other issues um, that you want to raise? Um, is there more that we should be doing to make it easy to contribute? Um, is more that we should be doing to, to communicate our plans. Um, so just to just give a couple of minutes now, just see whether anyone has anything else to add. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to ask whether disability um, categorization is part of um, modeling opportunity data. Um, yeah, I think I have an issue of, there's an, I think there's an issue that, uh, that I've got linked out from the spec of other, other types of tagging or categorization that we need to put on events. Um, and I, I think disability and other kind of uh, participation criteria or suitability criteria are kind of within that. Um, yeah, it, I think it would be useful to have a standard set of vocabulary for that, but um, I don't know uh, what variation exists in systems at the moment. So it's again, it's like activity list. It would be useful if people shared the different ways that they describe disabilities and there may be uh, well understood um, vocabulary already that we could just refer to. Um, but I would see that kind of stuff as being in scope. It's not something that we've looked into specifically in terms of say the research that I've done um, and existing data sets, but I think it's a really good idea to look into. So I'll make a note of that and I'll have a look to see if there's kind of like a standard categorization and then as Lee says if we can see how that relates through to what everybody's doing at the moment I think that's a good place to start. There's, there's definitely some, in, there's some bodies to bring into this group if we're going to have that conversation as well specifically around um, the, um, uh, the there's a there's a I keep getting the acronym wrong but there's definitely a four-letter acronym for an organization that does that and there's also Nick Evans's other Nick Evans's uh, uh, list of disabilities. I mean, there's some stuff I can, I'll just talk, I'll have a talk to the um, disability team here because I think there are some quite standard kind of terminology that's used and it, it gets a bit difficult because I think it's, there's different things that you can do between different sports and activities. So I'll have a chat, get something out of them. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have any other last uh, questions or comments? 
EFTS, by the way, just to give them the credit, EFTS was the was. Well, what, um, can I ask um, Brent and Stu, what do you guys think? I mean, you've been you've been listening intently to all of this. Um, what what is? Uh, yeah, what do you think? Of course, the irony of them maybe not listening intently right now when I ask the question. Yes, <laughs> I've done one. They have. Brent, are you there? Or have you? No. Okay, no worries. <laughs> what about Ed? Not, not a lot is the uh, short answer. N <laughs> not a lot. Uh, Ed, are you there as well, or are you are you not there? He is not there. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, oh, hang on. I'm here. Hey. hey. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I've got some. I've only just started looking at some of the different um, sporting companies that we've actually got that are bookable. Um, but I need to sort of. I think I'll, I'll send something to the, the mailing list about how I'm not sure how that's going to fit in to the event stuff at the moment. But I need to sort of dig into that a bit really and see see what we've got. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, I think I'm going to wrap us up then. So I'll just uh, thank you all for giving the time up again this afternoon. It's a really great discussion. Um, I'll post this. I'll post a link to the slide somewhere. Um, uh, and again, yeah, just just to ask you all, just to keep an eye on the spec, keep the comments coming. Um, uh, I think we can we can start to move forward really quickly. It's great. Sorry, Lee, Lee. Just one other thing: Have we sorted out all the problems of? joining the W3 community group yet? Because I still have people who said they wanted to join or tried joining, but nothing comes out of it. Um, there's one issue that I'm, uh, uh, I'm following up with W3C, W3C on. Um, some, I think some people have, hit, have, I have signed up, but have hit a moderation okay. issue, which I think is just relating to them accepting the kind of contributor agreement on behalf of their company. Um, so I'm just trying to work out what the process is for getting that unblocked. Um, okay. So, but yeah, we are actively trying to work through issues as they come up. Okay. Uh, right then. Um, okay. Thanks again, everyone. Um, and I'll uh, speak to you all again uh, in a couple of weeks. All right. Thanks, Cheers. guys.